Apple is working on a new low-cost MacBook that's gonna cost only $6.99. The cheapest MacBook ever promises to become the best way to get into Macs without selling a kidney. So in this video, let's look at existing leaks and rumors and find out how it will look, what chip will power it, and when will it be released. The leaks about this thing have been coming and going for at least a year, with Ming Chi Kuo confirming that Apple was indeed working on a cheaper MacBook. This all happened right before that scary fast event that unveiled the M3 MacBook Pros to us. If even the M3 can boost MacBook shipments, Apple may also consider, but hasn't decided yet, introducing a more affordable MacBook model to boost shipments with a target of eight to 10 plus million units per year. The leaks about this thing aren't all that conflicting and they all believe that the new cheap MacBook will be based on the 12 inch MacBook. Yeah, just, MacBook. This 12 inch MacBook was originally released in 2015 and for its time was a very revolutionary laptop. It was the first totally fanless laptop from Apple. It was crazy thin, thinner than even the M1 MacBook Air. It was also crazy light, weighing just a bit more than an iPad. However, it was not perfect. And people believe that the flaws of this laptop eventually lead to Apple Silicon. This 12 inch MacBook was originally equipped with Intel's chips and those chips were garbage. They were slow, hot, and barely enough to run Mac OS. Another thing that was really terrible about the 2015 12-inch MacBook was its keyboard. It introduced the famous butterfly keyboard, which was very complicated and unreliable. So if Apple does decide to use the chassis of the 12 inch MacBook for the new low cost MacBook, they will have to fix some of its issues and bring it up to speed. Since this MacBook will be the cheapest MacBook Apple ever made, there won't be any crazy features. The overall design will remain the same and I have no beef with that. The display will also remain absolutely identical and that's a good thing because that 12 inch MacBook had an amazing screen for its time. Apple even developed a special display technology that allowed it to fit into that super thin lid. 12 inches isn't a lot for a laptop display, but for the target audience of this MacBook, it's more than fine. We shouldn't expect to see a notch or pro motion. It will be the same screen from 2015, maybe with slightly increased brightness. People who are waiting for this laptop expected to have an upgraded FaceTime camera, but I'm not sure that it's one of Apple's priorities to do that. With this laptop, they're gonna cut costs wherever they can to make the production as cheap as possible. So using old hardware with modern processing algorithms is the obvious way to go. And the iPhone SE proves that. It uses an old camera hardware, but modern algorithms make up for that. As I said, the design and dimensions most likely will not change, so I guess we shouldn't expect to see MagSafe on this thing. I doubt that Apple would even make an effort to add another USB-C port. They will only change the keyboard to the Magic Keyboard that we all know and love and upgrade the motherboard with new internals. And that, if you ask me, is the most interesting part of it all. What chip is gonna power this low-cost MacBook? M1, M2, or M3? I think it is safe to say that M3 is out of the question. It is too new. M2 is a far more likely candidate to become the heart of this low cost MacBook. It's plenty powerful, very energy efficient, and has been around long enough to be considered an entry level chip. It's got eight CPU cores and eight to 10 GPU cores. M1, on the other hand, has all the same benefits as the M2, but is older and even cheaper to manufacture. This one also has eight CPU cores, but only seven GPU cores. Yet the performance difference between them isn't all that noticeable, about 10 to 15%. And Apple just recently discontinued the M1 MacBook Air. So that may hint us at something. This entry-level MacBook will most certainly have only eight gigs of unified memory and a 256 gig SSD. Right now, this is the lowest specs that Apple goes for, so it all fits perfectly here. The cheapest MacBook gets the lowest config. Will there be any options for the upgrade? We all know Apple pretty well, so even if the base model starts at $699, Apple would still offer upgrading the RAM to 16 gigs for $200 and the SSD from 256 to 512 for another 200. No one who actually cares about their money would pay for such upgrades, only the tech reviewers like me. There's also been an interesting rumor going around about the two sizes of this MacBook SE, 12 and 13 inches. So the question has to be asked, would Apple really develop a new chassis for that 13 inch MacBook SE or will they just repackage the M1 MacBook Air that has a 13 inch display? And if they do, 
do that, what's the point in having a 12 inch model if the price difference between the two models won't be noticeable? If Apple prices the 13 inch model at $699, then the 12 inch model would cost even less, maybe even $599. Well, of course, Apple could sell the 12 inch model for $699 and 13 inch model for $799, but that would be far too close to the M2 MacBook Air. Well, that's what you call a real predicament. So just to make things simpler, let's only talk about the 12 inch model from now on. Now that's where we should start talking about the discontinued M1 MacBook Air. Came out in 2020 and was a huge hit. Such a hit that it stayed on Apple's website until a few weeks ago. But it's still being sold by Walmart for an unbelievably low price of $699. Exactly the same price as this new low-cost MacBook should cost. And when this low-cost MacBook eventually comes out, the M1 MacBook Air would be even cheaper. So to keep the 12 inch MacBook ready for competing with it, Apple would have no choice but to use the M2. This is the only option to make the low cost MacBook worth the money. But even with that M2 chip, I think the M1 MacBook Air would still be a powerful rival to it. Just think about it. The M1 MacBook Air has a larger display, more ports, bigger battery, and a fail-proof design. The only things that this low-cost MacBook would be better at are the more powerful chip, smaller size and weight, improved Wi-Fi and Bluetooth standards, and that's all. So as you see, the difference between these two isn't all that big. Analysts believe that the main reason for Apple to develop such a cheap laptop is the increase in pressure from Chromebooks. But is this actually the case and will Apple really use such an old chassis? Well, most likely it actually is the case this time. The Chromebook market has grown rapidly, especially in developing economies or even the US in the education sector. Chromebooks are perfect for students. They are small, have screens and keyboards. That's basically all you need to study. For years, schools and other education institutions have been buying MacBooks for their students and those were always the cheapest models Apple had to offer. But now when each Mac MacBook goes at least for $1,000, schools have trouble with paying that much. So they're switching to less expensive Chromebooks. What's interesting is that the more expensive and high-end Chromebooks costs around $600, $700, right where this low-cost MacBook is gonna be. Well, honestly, I don't really know what to expect anymore. Everything is so chaotic and random. Apple has discontinued the M1 MacBook Air, which means that the only chassis that Apple could use for the low-cost MacBook is that of the 2015 model. But the model itself was discontinued a few years back, so Apple would have to revive the old production lines, call previous display suppliers, and do all of that hassle. If I was to decide how this low-cost MacBook should look like, I would just point at the M1 MacBook Air. Just lower its price to $700, and you don't have to do any engineering, and people would still buy it. Another thing that we should not ignore is the predicted release date. Analysts believe that Apple will announce it by the end of 2024. One hand, this would be a great time, especially if the event happens before the Christmas season. But on the other hand, we should consider that Apple is already selling the M2 MacBook Air for $9.99. By the time this low-cost MacBook gets released, shops like Walmart will have huge discounts on the M2 MacBook Air, and there is a chance that the difference between the new 12-inch MacBook and an all 13-inch M2 MacBook Air would be around $100 or so. And if we ever find ourselves in such a situation, there would be absolutely no reason to go for the 12 inch model simply because the 13 inch model would be better at every single thing aside from size and weight. Bigger display, better speakers, better webcam, better battery life, and so on and so forth. All this doesn't sound too good for the MacBook SE. Right now, it is far too early to make any predictions on the success or failure of this laptop. Apple knows how to sell and if they can sell us an eight-year-old iPhone for a full price, they sure as hell can sell us a nine-year-old MacBook. The only question is, will they go through with it? What do you think? Would you buy such a MacBook? And if you're actually planning on buying yourself a new MacBook right now, be sure to watch our video about the M-series chips where we go over each one and tell exactly who should buy it and why. Thanks for watching and see you next time.